Number 44. Some fish have a density slightly less than that of water and must exert a force to swim uh, to stay submerged. What force must an 85 kilogram grouper exert to stay submerged in salt water uh, if its body density is 1,015 kilogram per cubic meter? All right, so here's a little picture, right? We know that the density of salt water uh, is 1,025 kilogram per cubic meter. And they told us that the fish's uh, body density is going to be uh, 1,015 kilogram per cubic meter. Now we know that this situation cannot happen if, unless there's some extra force, right, in the problem. You, you cannot have a uh, less dense item being submerged in a more dense item. Doesn't work that way. So in order for the fish to stay submerged, uh, there has to be some additional force that this fish is exerting downward to stay down. And that's what we're after. Okay, that's what we got to try to find. So let's first start with the simple idea. If this fish is totally submerged, okay, we know that the volume of the fish, meaning the grouper, has to equal then the volume of the water displaced. Right, the volume of the water, and this is salt water, the volume of the salt water displaced. This has to be true. Okay, we've talked about this on several problems prior. Check out number 40. There's a detailed discussion of it. So um, this is this is basically the, the crux of Archimedes uh, principle. So uh, what we realize now is uh, why don't we expand on some of these volumes? All right, let's expand on some of these volumes. They're telling us densities and masses, right? So let's expand on these volumes and let's use this equation to do so. Why? Well, because I'm just trying to figure out a way to relate vol uh, volume to density and mass. Okay, and I realize that this equation does it pretty well. So if I solve this equation for volume, we realize that the volume is going to be equal to the mass divided by the density. Okay, so this is what I'm going to now use to substitute in for both uh Volumes. Now, specifically, since this is the volume of the grouper, that means it would be the mass of the grouper divided by the density of the grouper. Okay. And that would then equal the mass of the salt water displaced. I'm just going to leave it m sub s now, divided by the volume of the salt water displaced. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Divided not by the volume, by the density. My apologies. By the density of the salt water displaced. So I know three of the four things here, right? We know the mass of the grouper. We know the density of the grouper, and we also know the density of the salt water. What we don't know is the mass of the salt water that was displaced. So what I can do here is solve for the mass of the salt water displaced. So why don't we just do that algebraically? So this is the mass of the salt water displaced will simply be, be uh, will simply be equal to the mass mass of the grouper times the density of the salt water, all divided by the density of the grouper. Now what? Now we have to think about it. Well, what? What? How? How can this now help? me find something. Well, why don't we why don't we just calculate and sometimes, you know, instead of thinking through variables all the time, it might be good to actually come up with a number and see how it relates to maybe another number we have. All right. So why don't we plug in the numbers and let's see. So we got the mass of the grouper I told us was 85 uh, multiplied by the density of the salt water, which is 1025 and then I'll divide that by 1015. And what do we get here? So let's plug it into the calculator. Essentially, it's just a ratio, right? Take 85, multiply by the ratio of the two densities. So 1,025 divided by 1,015. And we get an answer of about 85.8. Okay. So this is 85.8 uh, kilograms now. Okay. So what does this mean? This means, so here's the weight. Here's, excuse me, the mass. Here's the mass. I mean, mass and weight, you know, if it, both acting on gravity, they're going to be the same thing anyway, but this is technically a mass, okay? If this is the mass of the grouper, 85 kilograms, and this is the mass of the salt water that was displaced, 85.8 kilograms, how can we think about the extra force that's necessary to keep the fish under? Well, if more mass of water was displaced than what the fish's mass is, it's the difference in terms of the mass between that of the salt water and that of the grouper, that is the mass necessary to find the force. Okay. In other words, the 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 force okay that the grouper has to exert will be equal to, and I'll leave this G R O U P. The force that the grouper has to exert will be uh, equal to. Uh, we can say now the difference between the force 
of the water, the force due to gravity, I should say, the force due to gravity of the water, minus the force due to gravity for the weight of the grouper. Okay, so the extra force that the grouper has to exert would be found by using this equation. So that being said, the force that the grouper has to exert, right, uh, which would simply be, yeah, let's just leave, yeah, let's just leave it in these terms. So the force of the grouper would have to exert to stay submerged is equal to the force um, of gravity of the water that was displaced. So here we have the 85.8 kilograms, right? So this would be 85.8 multiplied by gravity, 9.8. Then minus the force due to gravity of the or the force of gravity on the grouper, which is just the weight of the grouper, right? Which is the mass of the grouper, so that's 85, multiplied then by 9.8. So if we notice, this is kind of what we might intuitively expect, that the force that the grouper has to exert would be equal to 9.8, which is the force, uh, which is the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by the difference between the weight, excuse me, the mass of the water minus the mass of the grouper. Okay, this is kind of what we might have intuitively expected, but now we can see why it works. So all we have to do is just do this out, right? So take that, subtract it by 85, I'm using the exact value, and then multiply it by 9.8, and here we get a value, then the force that the grouper has to exert will be equal to 8.21 or so, considering rounding, 8.21 newtons. So that's the force that the grouper has to exert to stay submerged. Right? And we should expect that there should be some force because, again, the group is less dense than that of the uh, salt water. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.